waiting for the milling machine to stop. I'm um, going to show you that in a second. Um, here I have three, this is my working area. Got three blades here. Um, in fact, I'll show you that in a second. But first, you need to see how the blade is milled from a sort of CAD CAM perspective, I think. Okay, so here we have the tombstone. So this is a, a representation of what's in the, the Kitamura milling machine just now. So we've got some scales for the magnetron knife on one side, um, some blank stuff just now on the other sides. If you have a look here, um, you can see some pocket clips um, and there's some backspacers here. Um, like I said, this is for the this is all for the other knife, the, the magnetron knife. So if you look here, I'll just go a little bit into into the blade here and how it's machined. Um, so if we zoom in here, the first operation is what's called a roughing operation. These blue and yellow lines are the machining lines. So if we simulate that just now. Uh, put stock on, so that simulates stock. It looks a bit wonky, it looks like the whole thing's submerged in material, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so if we play this, so if we zoom in there, you'll see it's it's not actually cutting anything initially, it's floating in the air. Um, it'll start doing a cut here. Any minute now. There we go, there's the first cut. It's leaving material on because we're gonna do a few more passes, but let's just speed it up now. There we go. So you can see that. So that's the roughing pass, which just takes the majority of the material off and leaves, I think around about 0 0.4 millimeters on the blade, still to be machined off. So next up we'll add the second roughing pass to that. Again, simulate it, and what we'll do is we'll speed it right up right away. So that's the first pass, and here's the second pass, so in a different direction. Takes a lot longer, smaller amount of material getting taken off, leaving 0.2 millimeters on, 0 0.2 millimeters on. And now what we'll do is we will add this, which is the finish pass. And so if we simulate that, again, we'll speed through this. One, two, really blitz it. Yada yada, you know the drill. There we go, that is the finishing pass. The finishing pass taking longer than the first two passes combined. Now, this is a, kind of an experiment because the finish just wasn't good. Basically the, the, the blades, which I'll show you in a minute, um, were not that great and it was in taking a lot of hand sanding, which I want to try and avoid to sort of get them looking good. Right click, machining time, one hour and 16 minutes. Um, yeah, so taking a while. So now you know the process involved, we'll now look at the blades that I did sort of today and yesterday. One of my real dislikes is um, manual, sort of repetition, manual labor. I mean, I definitely have a certain level of laziness to me. Um, can't deny that. But I'm always looking for ways to not have to do stuff over and over. You know, if I have to spend three days solid sanding things that I've made, I'm like, Shh, there must be a way to automate that or that kind of thing. Um, so that's why I'm gonna show you blades and, and why these blades really sort of bug me really. As you can see, the blade is machined out of this solid square of steel, RWL34. Now the machining lines, you can sort of start to see them here, but we'll zoom in a little bit. Now, this has been sanded. I've done quite a bit of um, sanding on this already. And you can see here, there's the front of the blade. You see those machining lines? Those little, little, um, little bite marks 
like I said, this has had a lot of sanding, and those are still still there. Um, certainly down at the front as well. Look at that. It's actually fairly fairly um, fairly deep gouges down there. In that light there, you can see them down along here, up here, up along there. Um, those lines are just sanding lines. Ignore those. The plunge line is usually quite problematic, um, but I don't think there's anything I can do about that. You see, see that plunge line there? Just, just, um, you can see the, see the machining marks there. There's not a lot I can do about that. That, that's just the, the nature of it. I, I think, I'm, um, this, this, uh, this new blade, uh, maybe, maybe, we'll, we'll see. Up here is always a pain. You see right in that corner, you see those lines there. Those, mach those machining marks are a real, a real pain. And you see those ones. That's what I'm contending with, with this right now. The rest of it, going like a dream. Um, it's had one operation, two operation, and then I put it back on, and basically the third operation is to, to, to machine it out of here, and it'll just pop out the, pop out this steel frame. Let's take a look at this blade. Now unfortunately I can't take it off the fixture because um, if I take it off uh, I've lost the positioning of it um, and there's still more milling to do on it so what I'll do is I'll just use the other camera and get a bit of a zoomed in look for you. It is actually a little bit difficult to tell on there. I mean, you could see, I could see some machining lines. You could probably see some machining lines. Um, there's probably going to be some lines there generally, but until I, I think I just got to keep milling, mill the other side, and you know, take it off. And then what I usually do is I use like um, 1,200 grit sandpaper, a little piece like this. That sort of smooths it over and just shows any uh, any more sort of significant lines underneath. Um, amazingly, it's still. Um, I've spent hundreds of hours uh, working on blades. These ones, previous ones, over the last year or two, little, you know, I did a friction folder. Just had an idea. I can sand the, the bevel, the main bevel, the face of the, the milled face of the blade, um, while it's on the fixture. Um, don't know why I never thought of that before. Um, let's do that. That looked better, right? I mean, especially up in the in that little corner, right, sort of at the last bit I showed you there. Like, it's um, yeah, and that's only going over it with 1,200 grit sandpaper. Um, I mean, here's the thing. I believe that blades can be 100% done on the milling machine, you know, and have an amazing finish. And like, my in my head, it's doable, but right now it's kind of painful, and it's not, you know. It's not really happening. Like I said, hundreds of hours of messing around and uh, wasting time, investing time, whatever you want to call it. But in the next video, the plan is to show you 
these backspacers and these pocket clips. Um, for all the struggles I've had with the blade, they've actually been pretty good and uh, yeah, they actually come out really, really well. So stay tuned for that.